Meanwhile, Bilderberg Group changed their chairman. It had been Etnier Davignon for many years. It quietly changed to the head of AXA Insurance Group out of France, Henri de Castries. And it turns out he was a good friend and business school uh, alumni alongside of Francois Hollande, who was, of course, just elected president in France, uh, the first socialist president in some time, I think. At any rate, the head of the Bilderberg Group is quite chummy with Hollande, and there it is in Bloomberg and other sources about how they all went to HEC Paris, one of the top business schools, and other pedigree as well. Other people, including Officer Jean-Paul Agnon, French Telecom Chief Stéphane Richard, and others, all ran with the socialist Francois Hollande. So appearances are not what they seem. Bilderberg and other elite groups do play both sides. They don't really care what the system is as long as they have a mode for control over the population. Now, you may recall the report from a few weeks ago about how Goldman rules the world. Certainly in Europe, they've made a major impact. You've got people like Peter Sutherland over BP Oil and Goldman Sachs uh, director out of Ireland. You've got Mario Monti taking over as the top technocrat without an election in Italy. You've got the heads of state and finance in Greece and more, all part of the Bilderberg Group. So we know that's a major part of their plank. Of course, Etienne Davignon, the former chairman of the Bilderberg Group, bragged a few years ago back in 2009 that the group had indeed brought the euro into livelihood, had nurtured it along for really 50 years as part of their European uh, community project that emerged into the EU and which, of course, went hand-in-hand hand with the currency. They've got a quote there about how really the goal was for people to understand confusedly there's a change in the air, but no government will satisfy the reactions of the people. They have the greatest reticence and cynicism against everybody who holds responsibility. That's just a partial quote from Davignon. They have complete contempt for the actual people. That's why they want these authoritarian government circles that can run around, do an end run around sovereignty and any existing laws. Now, of course, it has emerged that in 2012, one of their primary agenda goals will be to save the euro. Obviously, that's on the table, but we're going to bring you more of the agenda as well. Paul Joseph Watson reported several weeks ago after the Washington Post surprisingly broke their Bilderberg silence. Washington Post sends representatives from the Graham family every year to Bilderberg. They know full well what's going on, but have basically never reported on it this year. However, they are suggesting the Bilderberg Group may help pick the vice presidential running mate for Mitt Romney. A lot of speculation that could be Rubio. A lot of talk about Bilderberg and Rubio in general, getting other organizations like Politico and other pseudo-mainstream organizations talking about Bilderberg for virtually the first time. Now, as we lead into that, we can remember the Bilderberg attendee who helped choose Obama's VP running mate, James A. Johnson. He was the former CEO of Fannie Mae. He became embattled in a scandal when it emerged he got some really questionable loans from Countrywide and the whole scandal surrounding Angelo Mozillo and really played a questionable role in the popping of the housing bubble. Now he's in another scandal, not dealing with choosing the running mate, but with the fact that he's been one of the longest serving board members of Goldman Sachs, who, as we noted, rules the world. Now, some counter elite factions, including the Sequoia Fund, and if I'm not mistaken, Warren Buffett are opposing his reelection, really saying his scandal has been too out in the open and it's not a good signal to reelect him to the board. Of course, it's likely that he will be reelected to the board, but it just illustrates the extremely close ties between Goldman Sachs and the Obama presidency. Again, James A. Johnson openly in the press had the role of helping choose Obama's VP running mate. When the scandal emerged with Fannie Mae and Countrywide, he suddenly stepped down just a couple days after the Bilderberg Group met back in 2008 at the same location they're meeting this year in Chantilly, Virginia. Very, very interesting stuff. And he just quietly stepped down and Obama said, well, James A. Johnson might be Goldman Sachs, but he was an unpaid volunteer, so let's not pay attention to those connections. After all, I'm for the people, hope change. And of course, James A. Johnson not only helped pick Obama's VP in 2008, he had a very public role in helping to pick John Kerry's running mate, which was John Edwards, who again went to the Bilderberg meeting in 2004, 
long before he himself was caught up in scandal. And had Kerry won the presidency, James A. Johnson probably would have been in the inner coterie with the cabinet position. He also previously helped people like Walter Mondale pick their VPs. So a very important player, again tied to Goldman Sachs, countrywide, the housing bubble. That's what I wanted to say because in 2006, it came out of the Bilderberg meeting, the first time I ever went in Ottawa, Canada, that they had decided to pop the housing bubble. Nobody could have called that if it wasn't truly from inside the Bilderberg Group. And yet, two years later, everything started happening in 2008, and guys like James A. Johnson have their fingerprints all over it. But it's not just the Democratic wing of the Bilderberg Group. It's not just Goldman Sachs. As you well know, the elite circle of Bilderberg loves to play both sides. They love to play kingmaker, especially in U.S. politics. And now you've got Obama surrogate Cory Booker, who's the gun-grabbing mayor of Newark, New Jersey, very close to the Wall Street circles based in New York City speaking out on private equity. There's been all the attacks inside Obama's campaign against Mitt Romney's ties to Bain Capital and against people like Henry Kravis of KKR, who in fact is a lifelong Bilderberg attendee. I think he's been going since he was in diapers. In fact, he's the only member of the Bilderberg group whose wife is also an attendee and she's on the steering group. At any rate, you've got Cory Booker so close to Wall Street there telling people to shut up about bashing uh, Bain Capital and the whole uh, venture capital and, and uh, equity industry in general because New Jersey has a lot riding on it. In fact, Blackstone Group that goes to Bilderberg and uh, elements of KKR have bought out pension funds all across the country uh, from employees, state employees, you name it, including in New Jersey for billions, including in Texas. They bought out the teacher's retirement system for, I think, $3 billion. And Alex warned you, so did Max Kaiser, so did Bob Chapman and all the other experts that they were going to play with the pension funds. You won't have them because they're all tied up in derivatives and these leveraged buyouts. So let's take a closer look. Why why does Cory Booker defend Henry Kravis, and who is Henry Kravis? One of the biggest bundlers for the Mitt Romney campaign, deeply, deeply tied to the Bush family, uh, really a long-term supporter of them as well. He's best known for the book and movie Barbarians at the Gate, describing his takeover, leverage buyout, hostile takeover of RJR Nabisco in the late 80s and 90s. A very interesting film because he will buy these gigantic companies with very little money, say perhaps 10%, and then use debt and leverage debt to buy out the company, defeat competitors, and really stack the dominoes in a very vulnerable way that has indeed played out in the larger economic crisis. Here's some of the video of him arriving last year in 2011 with his wife at the Bilderberg Group. It's not the greatest video, but if you look carefully, you can see that's Kravis on the right hand and his wife, Marie Jose, on the left hand. She, of course, is the head of the Hudson Institute, a veritable continuation of the Rand Corporation and a so-called conservative think tank. KKR is also involved in green eco-fascism, and they bundle portfolios for that. There's also been a lot of reports on what will Mitt Romney's foreign policy agenda be. And guess what? It again connects back to key Bilderbergers. Uh, they've raised some questions about the Afghan war. Of course, we know people like Mitt Romney will never be anti-war candidates. They will never help rein in the American empire. Romney, Rubio, all these other people are still uh, pandering to the neocon part of the Republican Party while kind of acting like maybe it's about time to get out of Afghanistan since that's now on Obama's watch. Now, it's emerged that among Romney's top advisors and potential cabinet appointees may be CFR President Richard Haas, who we heckled at the 2008 Bilderberg meeting right there in Chantilly. He attends, I think, every year at Bilderberg and has an important role to play at the Council on Foreign Relations, patently anti-American. He may become a cabinet member. He was previously a planning pol policy planning at the State Department official from 2001 to 2003 in the Bush administration. Further, Former World Bank President Robert Zolik may join the Romney cabinet. That's all according to Prospect, the American Prospect, the Romney foreign policy agenda.
And so I've done my own research by studying the names and how they connect with the larger agenda. Who are these people who meet at Bilderberg secretly every year? And indeed, it pulls up stuff like this. Democrats and Bain, people raise the question, why is Bain Capital donating more to the Democratic Party than to the GOP if the nominee is Romney, who used to work for Bain? Well, obviously, they both represent finance capital. They both represent crony capitalism, Wall Street, the elite of the elite who are selling this country and the whole rest of the world down the drain easy. Let's make a comparison now between that mock video attacking Romney for being a serial killer of corporations with the kind of action that people like Henry Kravis of KKR do when they do a leverage buyout and rip and shred the company as one might hollow out a fruit or as a vampire might hollow out the blood from his victim or a vulture from carry-on. And so again, they've already rooted all your savings through this financial crisis. Now they're buying up pension funds and the rest of it. Both sides of this false spectrum are very predatory, and we have to start to recognize that. Now, we've talked about how much these elites hate humanity. That's going to come up in depth with Lord Moncton on the other side of this break. But first, we'll take you to the quote of the day from the Club of Rome's 1991 publication, The First Global Revolution. They said, in searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, Famine and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention, and thus the real enemy then is humanity itself. Humanity requires a common motivation, namely a common adversary in order to realize world government. So again, man is the enemy, world government is the answer. Now, today was the launch of PlanetInfoWars.com. We urge you to go check out that website sign up for it, and begin your own mini InfoWars network, maybe a, a, a very large part of the InfoWars network. The point is you could put up your own content. You could put stories up you think are important. You could create your own videos, your own newscasts, get friends together, network with people you want to know, possibly date people, get groups together that like to hunt, like to fish, like to do survival skills, prepping, you name it. Planet InfoWars will become what you make of it. The point is to get in there and start resistance using the tools we have now while we still have a relatively free internet, which we have pointed out time and again they are trying to clamp down upon. PlanetInfoWars.com launched today, and now is the time to take advantage of it. And don't forget to be a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber, too, if you want to help out this broadcast financially. Help us support the platforms that allow all you great people to do your own work on sites like PlanetInfoWars.com. We'll be back after this with Lord Moncton. Stay tuned. I'm Aaron Dykes.